Will these protests in China continue and lead to a long-term policy change, or are they sensationalized by the media? Andrew, mainland China is in the news this week. We're talking about social media as well. Whether we're talking about people saying on the financial channels, you know, buy Apple puts because the Zhengzhou factories for Foxconn are shutting down. So they're going to struggle to make iPhone 14 Pro Maxes. Or you're talking about Shanghai and Beijing where people are saying down with the government. Otherwise, people are saying, dude, look at them. People are dying in, you know, apartments in Urumqi. Andrew, what is going on? We got to give our hot take on it as Chinese Americans. Yeah, and I think that the Chinese Americans perspective, first of all, not all Chinese Americans have to agree with us, but being people who have friends in China, who have family members from China or uh, that are uh, still do business there or whatever, and we have friends from China in America. So I, I, you know, I just would like people to look at such a complex geopolitical thing with a little bit more nuance than just reading headlines from like the media, which I understand is easy to do, but this is the hard this But is if the hard you stuff. guys were true blue blood Americans and actually assimilated, you would hope for that whole system to descend into chaos. No, no, no. Hey, B Billy Bob, listen, you can still be proud of America and also uh, have a little bit more uh, understanding of what's going on over there. Okay? Yeah, I mean, long story short, guys, we don't want to get into the details. We're not experts. Obviously, some of the hardcore details are pretty murky and people are arguing this way, arguing that way, coming up with conspiracy theories, more regular theories. Long story short, guys, zero COVID is a very harsh policy in China that they probably need to reevaluate because very, very few people like it. I'm not saying everybody doesn't like it. Probably if you're 70 years old and you have pre-existing conditions, you're like, oh, thank you for zero COVID because I was able to live because otherwise the youth, they just have to sacrifice three years of my life. When I was younger, I sacrificed 13 years of my life. So, you know, it's all relative to like their set of experiences there. But ultimately, Andrew, the young people really, really, I don't think anybody likes zero COVID as a policy, right? Which is means they're trying to bring COVID rates down to zero. So if somebody in your building gets COVID, they're gonna quarantine the whole thing for a week or a month. I mean, it is an extreme policy and three years later after COVID, has kind of spread around the world. Like China is still locking down entire cities. I mean, we're talking about locking down Shanghai, which is like the number one two city in China where there's a lot of like wealthy and educated people now finally stepping up and being like, yo, like I can't take it anymore. You know, especially like, the crazy. wealthy and the educated people with international exposure and they don't want to live like that. But, but also the Foxconn workers, the blue collar workers that are in charge of making parts of your iPhone. Okay. And, and, and it's true, man. If you want to support the Foxconn workers, you got to boycott the next iPhone. I'm just saying that that's on your responsibility. But I'm saying like they're really fed up because uh, they were locked in. They escaped from the their apartment buildings and then like they got replaced and then there was wage uh, disagreements and all this stuff. So it, it, listen, there are things that definitely China needs to do. I think this is a wake up call. I think this is a slap in the face, maybe not a punch in the face, but I think it's a slap in the face where it, it got the government's attention where they're like, oh shoot, man. Like, I don't know what we're gonna do. We probably not gonna react right away, but we gotta do something. Yeah, I think that there are clashes with the police, but it's almost like done in a Chinese way where they doesn't seem as crazy as clashes with the police in America for the variety of things, whether that's uh, the insurrection or whether that's like BLM or whatever. And I think that uh, because you don't really see this type of tense and slightly violent protests in China, that's why a lot of people are surprised and shocked. Some people are proud. They're like, wow, look at these people speaking up. I think it's great. Like, I agree with it. I think it's cool. But I will also say like in Brussels, they just rioted after they lost to Morocco 2-0 in the, in the World Cup. So there are like, People lash out in the rest of the world in way more extreme ways than in China, I will say this. Right, so, for sure. So maybe for China, this is definitely noticeable, though. This is notable, 100%. For sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, long story short, to me, it just seems like this overly strict parenting, the hyper-targeted tiger parenting that just goes on in China right now, at some point, something's got to give because not everybody wants to live like that, you know? And, you know, of course, China's going to have their perspective on it, which I do think has some valid points where they're like, dude, look at all the drug use and all the disunity and all the wildness of the West. We just got to control people and get people on the same page. And then over here, people are like, dude, I wasn't even going to do anything bad. Like, we don't even have guns and I got to stay in my crib for like 100 days in a row. You got to be kidding me. And, you know, the... It's just like so many pros and cons and it's a completely different system. But like we said, for me at church growing up, Andrew, I saw kids with hyper strict tiger parents and I was just always really glad 
then I didn't have them as parents. Right, and when we say hyper strict tiger parents, I am talking about parents that are so strict and so unfun that when you grow up, you probably, to be honest, might resent them. And that's very common for kids who had to go through that where the parents locked them down, right? They couldn't have sleepovers. They couldn't hang out at friend's house. They had to do this and this. They were on but a yeah, hard, it's for your regimen. own good. It's because I wanted yeah. you to become a doctor. I right. wanted you to go to Harvard Medical School. That's why you can't have fun when you're young because you might get addicted to the fun and then you don't want to study. I mean, as a Chinese American, and, but, and by the way, if you enjoyed your childhood at all, you would never choose to have those as parents. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think it's hyper complicated. Some people are gonna come in here and be like, yo, CCP bot, woo mouth, hot pop boys. How come you ain't name yourself the Smokehouse Boys? Cause that would have been more American. Welcome everybody to the Smokehouse Boys. You know, we're here to, um, yeah, no, hey, listen, you can still be proud of America. I'm a proud American, all right? Uh, and still also try to seek understanding and be bridges. Guys, you know, on this channel, that's all we preach. One of the things we preach is, is be a bridge for cultures because, uh, you know, the world is becoming more globalized and there's no stopping that. So you might as well make it the best globalized, you know, environment that you can. It's easy as like Americans to be like, oh man, I just hope China just devolves into chaos, man. This CCP needs to leave and this China's, I'm like, dude, trust me, if China actually did devolve into chaos. That's actually not good for the entire world because China has like all these octopus arms and yeah, whatever, it's like connected to so many different things. So I think you would want to just see like a different regime or, or uh, one that, you know, operates differently. I think that's, that's fair, but like you don't want China to, to be destroyed. That's probably not good for the world. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Try to keep it civil. I already know it's gonna explode. Do not attack each other. I mean, you know, we're just here to like have a good discussion and not get emotional about things, guys. Very, very unfortunate thing going on there. I hope they fix it and uh, let us know. Until yeah. next time, we out. Peace.